your tears, he hears your cry He will come at the right time This morning, briefly, we are sharing the word of God together. And please let us pray. What a good God we have. What a wonderful God that we have. The Lord that answers prayer. The Lord that knows how to give good gifts for his own children. We humble ourselves this morning. We said nothing of us, none of us, but all of you. And let our souls be richly blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This topic we are discussing this morning is what I titled to Operation Do It Yourself. Operation Do It Yourself. Let's say, Do It Yourself. Do It Yourself. Do It Yourself. Do It Yourself. Somebody say, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Through Jesus Christ that strengthens me. I can do it. I can do it. Through Jesus Christ that strengthens me. I can do it. Through Jesus Christ that strengthens me. Amen. We need to understand this that all of us, young or old, big or small, that God has equipped us with everything we need to make it in life. Again, I'm saying it. You are equipped with everything that you need to have breakthrough. You are equipped with everything you need to make it. I'll continue to say it until I can sense that you understand what I'm saying. You are equipped with everything that you need to be successful. Somebody is not listening. I'm saying it again. You are equipped with everything you need to be successful. God has given each and every one of us what we need to have breakthrough in life. But we need to understand things don't fall into place until we do things rightly and we follow the principles that is behind it. That is where we miss it sometimes. And that is the scheme the devil uses to steal our blessings from us. And please, let us pay attention. We believe God is about to show us something. And he did, he will show us in Jesus' name. Amen. We are in the image of God as we keep saying God in himself had confidence in himself that he will make it. Whatever he does will be pros prosperous. That is why you came to be, to be around. That is why I came to be around. Because God said, I want to make man. I want to make woman. This nature of God is inside of us, inbuilt within us. When you believe that God has made you in a way to make it, you will get him. But I want us to believe this. You cannot go ahead of God. You cannot run faster than God. You can only walk in the same pace with God before things can work the way you expect it to work. Sometimes we are anxious. We want things to fall into place quickly. We are running from pillar to pole. We want everything to work out. And of course, sometimes we get what we want to get. But in the process, we lost some other stuff. But when we are, you are working with, in God's agenda, you will never lose anything you will always gain. And the blessings and riches you will get daring will be the one that is abiding. And what I mean abiding is not the one that comes to day tomorrow is vanished. It's something that will remain with you. And that your children's children, great great grandchildren will still be able to enjoy. Because you took a moment in your life to work with God. You took a moment in your life to follow the standard and the principle of God. And I pray you will get this message in Jesus' name. Amen. When we don't make it, when we don't get there, there's always something that is wrong. There's always a bad apple that mess the whole bunch of apples. And that guy is the devil. No man in his right mind will not want to be successful. 
In fact, an insane person, a crazy man, when you ask, do you want food? He said yes. When you give a crazy man food and he's hungry, he doesn't throw the food away, he eats it. And you are not easy. So all of us we know something good that is that we know something good that we want. But the devil stand in between us and blessings. And now it is your responsibility as a child of God to put a stop to the devil. Devil, you know what? You do not have jurisdiction here. You do not have control here. This is my area where I operate. Devil, keep off. It is possible. And that is the principle we have to learn. Amen. Amen. I want us to understand this. Three things are important in life. Before we can say this. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah very well. Hallelujah. Three things are important in life towards success. The first thing is event. The second thing is the constitution. And the third thing is the authority. Event in the sense that if there is no you, there is no problem. If you do not have work, your boss will not give you a problem. If you do not have children, they will not be disrespectful. There will always be an event. Then what follows is the constitution to bring what is wrong to make it right. Take for example, in any organization, in any nation, there is always a constitution that where two people are fighting, they go to court, there's always a constitution that the judge will have to open and to exercise accurate judgment. So before you can actually break through from whatever has held you bound, that has caused some pains in your life, that has caused your blessings to be rubbed off, that has caused you to be in one point of situation or the other that are not palatable, there's always a constitution that is a law that has to say it cannot be so before you can break free from that cause. There has to be an authority to use to exercise the constitution. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A judge cannot stand and say, you are wrong and you are right. Because so, so, so and so, you go and pay so, so and so some amount of money. No judge can do that. The judge will back his statement with constitution before he exercises authority. Before you can make it, before you can succeed, there has to be forms of authority that backs the constitution before the event can be ex executed. I'm talking, I know that I'm, I'm going in a different realm, but let me bring it down, close to us. We call the title Operation do it yourself. What are you doing? Do it yourself means operation break yourself free. Operation solve your own problems. Operation go and possess the land. Operation make it and leave inheritances for your children. Operation I, I cannot be sick. I have to be healed. Operation I have to be promoted. I'll be staying here for too long. That is what I mean. Operation, do it for yourself. And when I say do it for yourself, does it mean it means that it's you, it's not your pastor. It's you, it's not your parent, it's not your wife, it's not your husband. It is you. Somebody say me. me. It is you that has to do it yourself. You do not rely on any man or any woman. To give you the boosting to do it. The only boosting you can get is what you are getting right now. Holy Spirit will energize you. He will remind you of the right thing to do. And the moment you do it, solution comes. That's what I mean. Operation, do it yourself. Now, what it is that you need to exercise some authority upon, you need to do for yourselves. I'm talking about you now. Things that are not working the way you want them. You put money in their, in their account. You put money in some investment. It's not yielding. You go to work like everybody. You leave house in the morning. You come back in the evening. 
But yet, at the end of the day, you don't have anything to show for it. You use all the money to pay phone bill, credit card bill, to pay the rent, to pay the money, to pay the car insurance, to pay health insurance. At the end of the day, you look for you, you look at yourself. There is nothing. There is nothing. That is what I mean. Operation, do it for yourself. Have a reminder. Have something to in a bank. Have an extra for yourself. Break yourself free from what has hold you back, that has hold you in prison, that has made you a slave, that has made you to work like a jackal and have nothing to show for it. Operations, get in your bank account after one year and yet you do not have anything. Even though you work oh, throughout the year. Operation, break yourself free. Get out of this position. Get out of where you are right now. Get out of this course current situation. You can do it. You can make it. You can be promoted. You can live long. You can rise up. You can do exploit. Because you are a child of God. Anyone that is not a child of God cannot make it. That is why Jesus Christ is very important. You cannot use the name of Jesus Christ and say, I, I know Jesus will do it for me. And you don't have a relationship with Jesus. It doesn't work that way, my friend. Are you tired of the present situation? Are you tired of the current situation? Yes. If you are not tired, then maybe this message is not for you. But if you are tired of the current situation, you need Jesus. Do not let us sweet talk ourselves. Without Jesus, there is no solution. So, we have to have some kind of interaction between us and God. When you are praying to God, I know my children, when they are talking, I know them. In fact, when one cries, I know who is crying. Because we have some relationship. You know I expect God to help you out when there is no relationship between you and God. You only call on God when you are in trouble. That is not what I mean by relationship. You must know Jesus personally. Not we know Jesus. Not I go to church. Not we praise church, we praise God in church. I mean, you as a person must have a definite personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Then you are on your pathway to help, to deliverance, and to victory. We will get there in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody say, I will make it in Jesus' name. I will make it in Jesus' name. Now let me go back to the big grammars I gave us the other time. Events, constitution, and authority. These principles will take you anywhere you want to get to. Events, constitution, and authority. They will take you anywhere you want to get to. You will go anywhere you want to be. You will be promoted to any extent that your mind can envision. You will live as long as you want if you can understand these three principles. The first thing is there is you. You are very important into the situation. The second thing is there is a constitution that declares that you can be free. And the third thing is that there is an authority that you can use to make yourself free. The event is you and everything that is happening in your life. The constitution is the word of God. This is the constitution. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It doesn't matter the version. It does not matter the version of the scripture, it does not matter. If yours has a black cover or mine has colorful cover. So far, the word of God is in your hands. You have the constitution, the legal authority you can use to defeat the devil any time, any day. You are sleeping, you are awake, you use the constitution. Because you know what? No judge can act against the constitution. No president of a country can act can act against a constitution. He will be demoted. He will be impeached. No man works against the constitution. And so the constitution of God cannot be abused. Devil cannot work against constitution. That is the truth I want you to understand today. Devil cannot work against constitution. Whatever devil is doing in your life right now, he is doing it because you are still not using the constitution against him. The moment you begin to use constitution, the story of your life will change. The story that is going on in the life of your children, 
your marriage, your current affairs, your situation, your finance, your health. The story of your life will change if you can walk with the constitution of the word of God. How will tell us how? Let's take it one by one. We have three examples to work with. One I call finance. The second one I call bondage. And the third one I call spiritual sluggishness. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by finance? Finance. Money is important to any man, to any woman, to any family, to any church, to anybody. Don't tell me you are spiritual and you don't need money. People that are close to God, the saints, pure people, you can say, oh, these people I know, they are definitely going to heaven. They need money. So money is important. Of course, the Bible says the love of money is the root of evil. I'm not talking about being obsessed with money. I'm talking about money itself is needed, even for the gospel. So you need money. Don't pretend as if everything is okay. You need money. There are some places you want to be and you are not there right now because you don't have money. That's why. There are some cars you want to ride. You cannot ride there because you don't have money. There are some schools you want to send your children. You could not because you don't have money. In fact, you want to perform, you want some surgeries to be done. You cannot do them just because you don't have money. Your insurance doesn't cover them. So you, have, you need money. So how do we get things to work for us? About finance, the principle. The first principle, the first thing we need to understand is this. For you to be financially successful, you must not be sluggish. You must not be lazy. God cannot bless you. God will not bless you if you are a lazy person. You can sleep in church. You can stay in church from morning to night. You can go into seven days marathon, prayers and fasting. You can even go to the mountain and sleep there. If you are a lazy person, you cannot succeed. Because it does not work with the constitution of God. You get it? Yes. You want to be successful? Get something done. God cannot work against his constitution. I'm sorry, my friend. You want God to bless you. God wants to bless you, but he cannot bless you until you get something done. So that means, go to work. Don't say it's too cold today. Don't say it's too hot today. And you remain indoor when some other things are laying down and this need to be done. So work. That is the principle. The second thing, let's open to Proverbs chapter 19, verse 15. Proverb 19, 15. Let's open our Bible. Ready? Let's read together. Listeners cast one into a deep sleep. And an idle person will suffer hunger. Shall we read together? Let's read from the slide. Slothfulness casted into a deep sleep. And a high do so shall suffer hunger. Let's read two more times. Slothfulness casted into a deep sleep. And a high do so shall suffer hunger. One more time. Slothfulness casted into a deep sleep. And a high do so shall suffer hunger. I can see. Church doesn't like my sermon this morning. So you are not reading. It's in the constitution. He said a slothful person cannot. It's not due for blessing. It's in the constitution. So you are praying, you are not receiving answer. Ask yourself, am I doing something? That is the principle. Now let's take for it. Okay, let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 18. Okay, let me read from here. Ecclesiastes 10, 18. It reads, it reads thus. Because of laziness, the beauty decays. And through idleness of hands, the house leak. <laughs> through idleness, everything falls apart. By much slothfulness, the building decay. And through idleness of the hands, the house dropped through. Idleness will not cause blessings. 
That is the principle. Now, what do we need to do to get financial breakthrough? The first thing is what? The first thing, what is the first thing to do before we can have financial sources? We must not be lazy. We must work. We must do something. The second thing is this. There is something called the, sow, the, the, the principle of sowing and reaping. Principle of sowing and reaping. Working is part of it. When God blesses you, God expects you to bless somebody through your blessing. And the first thing is that he has to, you have to bless God through your blessing. You know, God is the, rich, is, is the richest of all, right? Yeah. He's richer than all of us. He doesn't need you. He doesn't need me. He doesn't need our money. He doesn't need anything from us. But God tests us based on what he has given to us. And any time we pass that test, he bless us more. So, that is the principle of sowing. God made a rule. Anything you receive, you must give me 10% out of it. Hallelujah! It's a test of your character. God doesn't need your money. Don't think, if I don't give to God, God will suffer. No. If I don't give to God, what God is doing with the money will just be laid down. Trust me, there are some people that God will raise up when you don't do it. But the truth of the matter is that anytime you pay your tithe, you are obeying the law of reaping abundance abundantly. So that is the law of sowing and reaping. And something close to that is that when you, you know 10% is a law, God demands it. Offering. God doesn't give a percentage on offering. He gives percentage on tithe. He said 10%. Bring it to 10 parts and give me one of it. But when he talks about offering, God folds his hand and is watching you. The way you are dealing with it. That means give generously from your heart. Let me see what you can do for me. On Friday, we were reading about Solomon, who gave a bunch of stuff to God, to the extent that the altar could not take it. And God was so happy. And God started to give him, God started to appear to him and was asking, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Anytime you do something for God, God is always willing to bless you. There's always blessing that is attached, for especially when you go outrageously to give to God. Now, the principle of sowing and reaping extends to the area of helping other people, not only God. Do you want to be successful? If you want to be successful, give to other people. Many people are so obsessed with their family. It has to be me and me and me. I, me and myself. And if, if they are married, they have family, they want to be responsible. It's all about me, my wife and my children. And that's it. They shut doors against any other thing that is happening around them. That is not the principle of God. God cannot bless you much. Anyone that will be blessed abundantly has to be generous and be generous in giving. And they don't have to be your family member. Anytime you do something good for other people, God is looking at you and is happy with you and is willing to bless you more. That is the principle of sowing and reaping. Now, when you are doing all those things and things are not falling into place, there are things you need to do. The principle of the word of God says, He that scatter shall gather. He that sow in tears shall reap with joy. If you scatter, you should gather. If you sow, you must reap. And when you scatter and you don't gather, when you sow, you cannot reap. There is a problem. And so you have to use the constitution to address it. I'm telling you something you need to do to set yourself free from all those bondages that are holding you down. A lot of problems are just going around in our life. They don't have to be there if we know the right thing to do. So you use the constitution to bind the devil and send him, and send him into bondage and set yourself free. Let's go to Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Genesis 8, 22. What does the Bible say? What is the constitution? You can read from the slide. 
Genesis 8, 22, what does it say? Why the head remained? Seed time and harvest time and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Inasmuch there is this earth in existence, there must be a seed time and harvest time. If the only thing that is happening in your life is to seed and there is no harvest, it is working against the constitution. And that means you have to arrest it and deal with it. Because it's not of God. If I am sowing and I'm not reaping, then it is not working according to the constitution. After abiding by the principle of God, which I have said, give to God, give to others. And yet you are sowing, you are not reaping. Use this, read this word to pray. And also give an example. In Proverbs chapter 126, Verse 5, it says, So he that sow in tears shall reap with joy. Joy chapter 2, verse 25. He said, I will repay all the years that locusts and cankerworms have eaten your land. That is God. He said, I will repay. I will give back to you everything that you have lost. Yes, you felt like you have made a mistake. You made a costly mistake. That is why you are in the mess right now. God said, he will repay you back abundantly. He will give to you more than you have lost. That is the principle of God. And so, when things are not working, what do you do? You use the authority. Hey, what type of authority do we have? We have the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us say, I have the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. I have the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone who believes in the name of Jesus and use that name will have victory. Can I say it again? Anyone who believes in the name of Jesus and use that name over any situation, it will have success. I'm not saying anyone who uses the name of Jesus. Anyone who believes in the name and uses the name will be successful. Do you believe in Jesus? Somebody, do you believe in Jesus? Yeah. So, do you believe in the authority of the name of Jesus? You believe in the authority of the name of Jesus? Yeah. I want you to close your eyes quickly and I want you to talk to God. I said, everything that is happening in my life, every financial situation that I'm going through, I am using the authority in the name of Jesus Christ to silence it. I am using the authority in the name of Jesus Christ to defeat it. I take it away from me. Whatever has hold me down, that's made me a prisoner. Today I free myself from it. Everything that has holding me down, inability to be faithful with God, robbing God and not giving him his due, paying the tithes and offering. I'm not helping my fellow brethren. I pray you will forgive me. I repent from today. I will do the right thing. And Lord, I am praying that as right now, as I'm praying, let the situation of my life change. Let my financial situation change. Let it change. Let it change. Let it change. Let it change in the name of Jesus. Let it change in the name of Jesus. Your financial situation to change for you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bondages. 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 What is called bondage? A bondage. Something that is captivating. Something that is enslaving. Something that is controlling. Something that is ruling you. It is a bondage in your life. Something that is not making you to be happy. Something that is not making this so work out well for you. Something that is making you to sow and not reaping. Something that is making you to walk and have nothing to show for. Something that makes you to continue to see. Something that makes you to run and learn and never get something to show for. It's a bondage. Something that makes you never to be happy is a bondage. Anything that is not working in the right order in your life is a bondage. So, don't think you are not in bondage, even though you are not in prison. Don't think you are not in bondage, even though there is no somebody putting alcohol on you and walking you to the cell. A lot of people are in prison, and yet they put on suit and ties. 
A lot of people are in bondage, and yes, they walk on the Wall Street. A lot of people are in bondage, yes, they ride with nice cars. Bondages doesn't measure you with a status. Anyone who loses the right focus on using the principles and constitutions of the world will continue to live under bondage. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how much you have been around. Bondage doesn't weigh you based on experience. Hey, bondage, you must be free. But one way or the other, many people are in bondage. You want this to so work out, but they are not working out. You must free yourself. What is the principle here? The first thing is this. No matter what has hold you down, I'm asking you a question. Who are your friends? Who are your friends? Where do you have some nice time? Nice time. Where do you stay to pass some times? Bondages come to our lives through negligences. When we are not paying attention. A lot of people do not supposed to be in bondage but because they are not just paying attention. If you are associating with evil people, you are under bondage. I want, you to, I want you to listen to me. I'm not saying if you are doing evil now. Of course, anybody that is doing evil is under bondage. If you associate with evil people, you are under bondage. There is a curse of God upon such a person. What does Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10 tells us? Proverbs 1 10. I want you to read. I actually want you to read. Open your Bible and read for us. Read, read. Open your Bible and read. Proverbs 1 10. We're ready? Okay. It said, My son, let's read. Indeed. My friend, My if sinners entice you, consent thou not. In another version. My friend, if sinners, they entice you, they introduce thoughts to you, do not listen to them. If you are close to wrong people, wrong association, effect of their evil will fall upon you. And worse still, if you engage in evil, there is always a cause that follows. And I use fornication as an example. There is no way you walk in fornication, you act in fornication, that there is no sin, no evil that is attached with it. You can never go free. You cannot go free. There's always a cause that is associated with it. So when we are talking about God, I've been in this mountain for a long time. I've been praying over this issue for a long time. I've been working so tirelessly, and yet I am not rich. I ask you questions. Are you putting yourself in bondage and you expect your situation to change? Situations will not change when you live in unrighteousness. So, unrighteousness brings bondage into your lives. Let us understand that principle. Do we know that? Let's say it together. Unrighteousness bring bondage. Unrighteousness bring bondage. Unrighteousness bring bondage. Okay. In First John chapter three verse eight, the Bible says, "He that sin is of the devil." So you will continue to be under that oppression. But what is the constitution? What is the authority to make ourselves free out of it? The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18, it says, I am my children, I am the children that the Lord has given unto me. We are for signs and for wonders. Hi, James, online in Kataiwo. I am for signs, I am for wonders. Whatever has happened in my past cannot dictate my future. So far, I have repented. So far, I have made amendment. So far, I am working with God. Who? Stop telling yourself this thing is happening because of what of those things I've done, even though you have repented. I am still continuing to, re to remain in this situation because of what I did 10 years ago. Who told you that? 
That is not in the principle of God. That is not from the word of God. The Bible says, if you confess your sin, faithful and just is he to forgive all your unrighteousness. When you commit sins and you, for, you repent and you ask God to forgive you, he will forgive you. Thus, God does not count record of sin. He does not keep record of sins. So, tell yourself, God has forgiven me. Why am I not forgiving myself? God has made me free. Why am I still in bondage? God's devil still come around and tell you, you know you did it. You know you are a sinner. You know you are not due for promotion, right? You know that, right? You know you committed that sin yesterday, right? You know you did it last year, right? You know that you're not supposed to do what you did, right? He continued to remind you. But that is the devil. He's not God. You know what God is saying? God is saying, my son, you know I've forgiven you, right? You know I have overlooked your sin, right? You know I've forgiven your mistakes, right? You know I died for your sin, right? You know I love you, right? Two conflicting stories. Devil will tell you lie. God will tell you the truth. So, whatever it is that is a bondage in your life, check it. Have I repented for my sin? Every no sin must be confessed. Every no sin must be confessed. Please, don't cover up your sin. It's not going to help you at the end of the day. At the end of the day, you are supposed to, you are poor when you're supposed to be rich. At the end of the day, you are living in bondage when you're supposed to be free. At the end of the day, you are poor when you're supposed to be rich. At the end of the day, you are a failure when you're supposed to be successful. At the end of the day, your children are haywire, running the haters scatters. When they're supposed to be around you and, and, and enjoy the mutual love of the family. Confess your sin and repent and move on with your life. Are we getting it? Am I talking to somebody this morning? Yes. Okay. Genesis chapter 12, verse 20. What does God say? The principle of the Bible now, the constitution. The Bible says, He that blesses you shall be blessed. And what? Who he that causes you shall be what? He that blesses you shall be what? He that causes you shall be what? You shall be blessed in Jesus' name. You shall be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. You shall be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If God has blessed you, who can curse you? Nobody. If anybody thinks he has authority over you, does he have authority over God? No. If anybody says, I am a sharpshooter, whatever he says comes to pass, is he God? No. So I'm telling you this morning, stop being afraid. Tell yourself, I am under the authority of God Almighty. God has blessed me. Nobody can curse me. One of the scriptures in Proverbs says, As bound by wandering, so shall a costless curse not alight. If God blesses you, nobody can curse you. Somebody say amen. amen. So that is the principle of the Bible. I'm trying to make you understand something. When you are in bondage, what should you do? Somebody talk to me. When you realize there's a problem in your life, what should you do? Authority. Use the authority of God, yes? Yes. What is that? What, what else should you do? Call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus, yes? Confess your sin. Okay, let's put it in the right order now. The first thing is when there is a bondage in your life, confess your sin. Tell God to forgive you. You know what? The next thing, you know what you do, right? What is next? After you confess your sin, you use the, you, you go into the constitution. You don't just use authority. Nobody has a gun and go to the street and start to shoot everybody. You know your enemy. And you know what type of ammunition you need to use against the enemy. You know, devil knows the Bible, right? He understands Bible too. He knows the principle of the Bible. You cannot say, devil, stop it. He will ask you, why should I have to stop? You have to give the reason why he has to stop. And when you tell him the reason, he says, oh, 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 he's shaking out. Because he knows that you understand what the truth is. So you overcome the devil with the right application of the word of God. So look for the scripture and, ask, and use one 
that exactly address that situation. And you say, Jesus Christ said, my sins are forgiven. The word of God says that he that blesses me shall be blessed, he that causes me shall be cursed. Because you devil and your forces, you choose to curse me, I curse you back in the name of Jesus. Every power that is working against the will of God in my life, I curse you. You are under a curse. Because the Bible says in Genesis chapter 12 verse 3 that he that blesses you shall be blessed and he that curses you shall be cursed. Whatever you say with the authority, with the backing of the constitution has to be established. And you say, touch not my anointed and do my prophet's noah. So they will take your hands away from my children because they are anointed of the Lord. When somebody, the doctor brings the doctor's report and says, you're going to die in the next two, two months. You open to the, to the scripture and say, okay, Bible says, I shall not die, but live to declare the word of God. That will, I rebuke the spirit of death. Get out of me in Jesus' name. And they will leave you. Because you are using the authority. You are using the constitution. You are not just shooting anyhow. You know what you are doing. You are using the right word. Devil has to obey. The Bible said the devil also knows that there is God. And he trembles with fears. When devil knows you know what you are doing, he trembles. Oh, what are you trying to tell me? Two lawyers when they go to the court. Both of them want to win the case, right? Yes. Nobody want to go home be a loser. But the one that wins is the one that knows the constitution to use for, for his argument. Use the right constitution, my friend. No, I cannot be poor. No, my children cannot misbehave. No, I cannot fail. No, I cannot be poor. I cannot be poor. No, I cannot suffer. No, I cannot be ashamed. No, I'm going to live long. No, I'm going to possess the gates of my enemy. Everything else will be well with me. Not because of any reason, but because I'm a child of God. Because it's been written in the Constitution that whatever thing I lay my hands on shall prosper. Hey, let me say, wow. He knows what he's doing. Hey, let me leave him alone. Let me go to Jack. Don't, but don't let me touch that cliff I think he knows what he's doing. That is the devil. When he knows what you're doing, he runs away from you. Because in the Bible, the Bible says, when Jesus used the word of God against Satan, on the, on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the mountain of his temptation, when he was being tempted, the Bible said, they will flee from him. When he was tempting Jesus about food, and Jesus said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Because it's in the Bible. They will, oh, 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 oh. That is the word of God. And he runs away. I beg you, my friend, know what the scripture says. And that is one of the reasons why you have to read your Bible all the time. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Yes. And what is the authority? How do you use the authority? You say, I cause all the forces of darkness that are against my life. And I proclaim blessing into my life in Jesus' name. Let's say it together. I cause all the forces of darkness. Okay, let's, please say it after me. I cause all the forces of darkness. I cause all the forces of darkness. And everything they are doing against me. Everything they are doing against me. And I proclaim blessing into my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's say one more time. I cause all the forces of darkness. I cause all the forces of darkness. And everything they are doing against me. And I proclaim blessing into my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The last word I'm going to mention, what I call spiritual slothfulness. Spiritual slothfulness. Spiritual slothfulness. Many people want to serve God. Many people really love God. But they end up not serving God. They end up messing up. They mess up, falling back. The problem is because there is something that is wrong. You have to repent, my friend. You have to repent. Somebody say, I know my God. God is a forgiving God. He forgives me. Anytime I commit sin, I ask him, he's going to do it for me. Yes, it's true, but you are, you are misusing the opportunity. Anybody who repents genuinely doesn't fall into sin easily anymore. You don't fall into that sin anymore. Even you might fall into similar sins, you might make similar, but whatever you have made you to fall, you don't go ahead and mess with it again. That doesn't mean you are improving. So what I mean is, repent genuinely. 
Tell my tell yourself, you know what? Enough of enough is enough. This thing is holding me back. It's not making me to be rich. I keep losing my money. I keep losing my investment because of this little sin that I'm committing. I repent today. I repent today. I change. I'm not going to do it anymore. Because the consequence is bigger than what I'm doing. So when you repent, repent genuinely. And ask God to forgive you. And ask God to come and take charge of your life. So the principle is repentance. Please let us open to 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. Yes, ma'am. If my people shall call by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, they will then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Amen. God bless you. If my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and repent from their wicked ways. Then I, the Lord, will forgive them. And I will do what? I will heal their land. If my people which shall come by my name shall humble myself. Can you humble yourself, my friend? Can you just stop bragging in sin? Can you just repent from these wicked ways? Can you just change? Can you just give God's chance in your life? Can you just tell him, God, I give up. You know what? It's not worth it. I'm not going to hell fire. You know what? It's not worth it. I'm going to serve you as from today because I want to enjoy myself. I want to enjoy my family. I want to stay around with my family now. I want to enjoy my family. I want everything to work out well for me. So, I repent for my sin. Can you humble yourself and say, God, I want to stop being arrogant. I want to humble myself and serve you. And you will see what will happen. We know the story of the man called Prodigal Son. Popularly known as the prodigal son in the scripture. He took everything from his father when his father was still alive. And he said, give me my inheritance. And he took it. And he went. And he used everything. It was a slap to his father. The culture of those people doesn't allow something like that. You don't inherit from your parents until they have died. But this man, when his father was still alive, he said, give me my own inheritance. And you know what? That was a disappointment. That was a slap to his father. And he went to his foreign land. He abused every opportunity. You know what, right? He lost everything. He changed his mind. He humbled himself. He repented. He came back. What happened? The father welcomed him. The father said, you know what? You did this to me. I, you're not going to be my son no more. I disappoint, you have disappointed me. Forget about it. You cannot come to my house anymore. You have taken your own part. Go away. Everything that remains belongs to your brother. God didn't say that. God still welcome. God still celebrates. So that is God. When we come to God, He celebrates us. Do not focus on the magnitude of your sin now. Focus on the repentance that you receive from God. Because you want to make it. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 8, it says, If your sin is as red as scarlet, as scarlet they shall be as white as wool. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says, Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and never be weary. They shall walk and never faint. That is the principle now, my friend. Spiritual sluggishness is a disease. It's a spiritual disease. You can't even you can't even kill a fly with your prayer anymore. Now everything depends on what doctor tells you. You don't even have any higher tower of faith in you anymore. Everything now, if it's not on chemist, if it's not a medicine, you don't believe in healing. You don't even believe that your children can come back home. Everything has gone. Your faith has become watered. Hardly do you even pray anymore. You don't even believe that miracle can happen in your life again. That is spiritual sluggishness. Many people cannot even speak in tongue anymore. They used to speak in tongue before, but now they have lost everything. Many people used to pray for hours before, but now they only pray for 10 minutes or 5 minutes. That is spiritual sluggishness. 
Before you used to read your Bible at least once a day. Now, you don't read your Bible until you come to church and they say, open to Isaiah or Jeremiah. That is spiritual sluggishness. It is time for you to come back to where you have left off. Come back to your root. Come back to your source. Because nobody gets blessed ideally from God or else you walk in the principles of God. And what is the authority that we use? You declare it with your own word. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oppression, do it yourself. Oppression, do it yourself. Declare it with your own mouth. I want also, I want to also say together, I have received forgiveness through Jesus Christ. I have received forgiveness through Jesus Christ. I have received forgiveness through Jesus Christ. Therefore, I declare my power over sin. Therefore, I declare my power over sin. And in and over all slothfulness. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Please say it one more time. I have received forgiveness through Jesus Christ. I have received forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I declare my power over sin and spiritual slothfulness. Therefore, my power over sin and spiritual In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. People of the Lord. In this operation, do it yourself. It is operation I going to make it. Please let's look up before I walk out of this hotel. You, hi, you, you, you are not born for shame. Look up, look up. You are not born for sorrow. You are not born for disease. You are not born for poverty. It is not in your it is not in the geology, geology of God. It is not in the blood system of God. When do you break cause for? How come there is a problem in your life and you call yourself a child of God? If you are a son and a daughter of the Almighty God, problem should not be in your life. So I provoke you today to stand in the spirit and accuse the devil. Stop me harassing me. I take my authority and I begin to walk in it. Victory is now mine and I possess my victory in Jesus' name. He knows, he sees your tears, he hears your cry He will come at the right time Cannot fill any shine or fill You shall overcome We shall overcome We shall win, we shall not fail We shall